Christmas manger and upon ourselves, that we who reflect on the birth of Jesus may share in the salvation he accomplished. God of every nation and people, from the beginning of creation, you have made known your love. When our need for a Saviour was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him who is God with us and Saviour of all and now lives and reigns forever and, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Savior, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Bring us, who have known the revelation of that light on earth, to see the radiance of your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy of the harvest, as people exalt with dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ. 
he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify his for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. 
and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. <clears throat> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever tried to tell someone something, but no matter how many different ways you, you use, no matter what <coughs> words you use, you just can't get the message through to them? Then in desperation you end up saying, what will it take to get through to you? Parents say to their, that to their kids. Wives say it to their husbands. How can I get through to you? Husbands say it to their wives at their own peril. <laughs> Christmas is about God becoming human flesh and blood in his son Jesus Christ in order to save us from our sins. We live in a world of civil strife, a world of war, of religious and ethnic divisions violence and conflict. We can easily come to the conclusion that God is having a hard time getting through to us. War, conflict, climate change, domestic violence, financial inequality, political divisions, all seem to indicate that either people are ignoring God or have given up listening, or maybe God's given up. Why doesn't God do something powerful and dramatic to grab the world's attention, to shake people out of their rebellion, their apathy, their arrogance, and their self-indulgence. Why doesn't God do something like we read in the Old Testament book of Exodus and send plagues like he did back then? Pharaoh was the king of Egypt, a ruthless dictator who persecuted the Hebrew people. They were slaves. And it seemed the only way God could grab Pharaoh's attention was by making life so uncomfortable and unpleasant and inconvenient that Pharaoh would have no choice but to let them go. I mean, imagine lice crawling all over you, flies up your nose and in your eyes, three days of darkness so thick that you couldn't go anywhere, big ugly boils forming on your skin, hail and locusts that ruin the crops, and you open your wardrobe and out jumps a frog Take the lid off a saucer, another frog. Finally, all the firstborn sons die. Pharaoh was forced to let them go. But it took ten plagues. And even after letting them go, he changed his mind, got his soldiers ready, and went after them. 
There are other ways and there are other stories God used to try and get through to people. Finally, God tried a different way of communicating with us. We heard it in our New Testament reading from the letter of Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. What does all that mean? It means that the way God grabs our attention is not by violence or political maneuvering or a military invasion, but by making a poor, unmarried woman pregnant, sending an angel to tell her she is blessed among women. Any God who would do that will stop at nothing. We wouldn't have done it that way. How would we have done it? Just look at the news. The way we would have done it is the way we're still doing it. Only God would choose to do it the way he did. And we've been trying to come to terms with it for over 2,000 years. Even the writers of the New Testament struggle to describe it. In a way, it can't be described. Words are insufficient. So the word became flesh. The Gospel of John describes it as light coming into the world, the Word becoming flesh and living among us. This is shocking stuff. It's too much to grasp all at once. That's why we have to keep coming back to it every year. That's why the Church spends four Sundays in the season of Advent building up to Christmas by prayer and reflection something even more vital in our frenetic rush this time of year. We hear John the Baptist urging us to keep alert, keep awake, keep looking. Why? Because God has come. God is coming and God will come in the flesh, becoming one of us. So when people say, why doesn't God do something to fix this world? We'd better be careful. Beware. At Christmas, we are, come, we are confronted again with the good news that God became a Jewish carpenter from Nazareth who was killed by the authorities, not because he was born in a stable or because angels sang to shepherds looking after their sheep, but because of what he said and did. The advent or coming or arrival of Jesus has created a crisis in our cosy status quo our social, economic, political, and even religious arrangements. When the angels sang glory to God in the highest, which we sing at every Mass, they sang the very words that had previously been used to praise Caesar. Luke is telling us the arrival of Jesus is politically significant. Please don't understand what that means. Jesus didn't form a political party. When the crowd tried to make him king, he ran for his life. He didn't propose new legislation. He didn't outline a specific plan of action for changing the world and say, if you agree, sign here. He said, follow me. The role of the church is to form disciples or followers of Jesus. Then he showed us where to follow. Up a hill to be put to death on a cross, then be raised three days later and come back to face his murderers and the friends who had abandoned him, not with violence and revenge and payback, but with mercy and forgiveness and love. To say that the arrival of Jesus is politically significant doesn't mean the church formulates pieces of legislation. It does mean standing up for the poor, the outcast, the refugee, the marginalised, seeking to overcome division and hostility by creating understanding instead of fear and suspicion of those who are different. That may mean speaking out against policies that foster division and exclusion. It means caring for the environment and addressing climate change. The church not only has a right but an obligation and a duty to be involved in politics, because that is part of our following of Jesus. When we realise that, we may not be so keen for God to do something to fix our world after all. 
when we realise the implications of what God has done in Jesus, we may have second thoughts. The great Roman orator Cicero, in his treatise on the nature of the gods, said an intelligent person has basically three alternatives. First, you can be a Stoic. The Stoics believed the gods are not separate, they're not somewhere out there. Rather, everything is saturated with the divine. And so what we need to do is to awaken, to stir up the divine within us and get in tune with that. Or, the second alternative, he said one can be an Epicurean. The Epicurean said, if the gods exist, they're not much interested in us, or the world, or its problems. So the best you can do is not whinge about it, just get on the best way you can, and enjoy life as much as possible. Or, finally, you can be like Cicero himself. He was an academic who served the state. Religion is too difficult, too complicated. So just go along with the way things are. Maintain the status quo and use religion to help hold things together. The church is a good thing because it helps to keep order. Well, without God becoming human flesh in Jesus, that's about the best you can do. All those three alternatives keep things the way they are. They leave the social and political arrangements unchallenged. But even Rome eventually collapsed, a warning for us. While Cicero was urging his fellow citizens to hold the fort, a baby was born in Judea, whose followers would help bring down the whole empire, not with violence, but with peace and love and good news. Why doesn't God act to save the world? He has. But are we ready for it? Are we prepared for God to come so close? Deep down, do we prefer God to remain distant, to stay out of our world, not get involved in our lives? Today and tomorrow, we celebrate the festival of the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ. This may be a threat to our aloofness because God comes close. As we receive Holy Communion, God again enters our lives as a gift. You may get Christmas, Christmas presents you neither want nor need. God's gift in Jesus Christ, disturbing, un unsettling, may not be the gift we want, but it's the gift we need. It can't be bought or ordered online. You can't save up for it. It is pure grace and gift. Will you receive it today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and together affirm the faith of the Church in the Word of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the waters of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the 
Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that at your coming, the angels sang a message of peace and goodwill. We pray for all our brothers and sisters who long to hear your message today. Those whose lives are shattered by war, for victims of hatred and persecution. And we think particularly of the people of Ukraine, of Iran, Afghanistan, by your light, dispel the darkness of our aggression and intolerance. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise for your coming among us, for we have found favour with you, and you delight to dwell with us. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ as we celebrate your birth, for all who spread your good news, and all who have never heard your name. By your light, dispel the darkness of our faithlessness and disobedience. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that at your coming you were born into a family, sharing our human joys and sorrows. We pray for our families and friends, and all with whom our lives are bound, for those separated from loved ones, those who will spend Christmas alone. By your light, dispel the darkness of our loneliness and selfishness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that at your coming you make your place with the unwanted and poor. We pray for all for whom society finds no room, for the homeless, the outcast, the friendless, and the unloved, for the sick and the dying, and all who minister to them. By your light, dispel the darkness of our terror and pain. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that throughout the ages people have rejoiced at your coming. We give you thanks for all who have recognised you and pointed others to you, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, for Joseph, for the, for the shepherds and wise men, for all who have searched for you and come to worship you. By your light dispel the darkness of death, so that we, with all your saints, may come at last to the radiance of your presence. Open our eyes to see the signs of your coming. Open our ears to hear the angel voices. Open our hearts to make a place for you. Let us recognise you in our midst, for we too would worship you. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the reading of this. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. In your word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying. Body 
of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise.
us pray. God of heaven dwelling among us, we thank you for feeding us with this holy food. By your grace, keep, of, keep us ever faithful to your word made flesh, that as his body in the world, we may bring your presence to all people. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your grace and glory. <clears throat> Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.